welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video and our channel, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button down below, because we're always releasing new videos and new content for engineering students. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. Our video today is on the moment area method. So we're going to find the max deflection using the moment area method. So we're given a simply supported beam. Uh, we have EI is constant, E is 200 GPA, we have I, and we're asked, yeah, like I said, to find the, uh, determine the maximum deflection using the moment area method. So um, a bit of a tricky question, but as long as you know how to approach it, this is not a problem. Very, very common exam questions because it's something a little bit different and um, it does require a little bit of thinking. So let's get started. So right off the bat, um, if you haven't seen our previous video, our previous video was more of a basic explanation on what the moment area method is. So I'm going to be skipping some of the basic explanations. So if you haven't seen that one and you're here, you know, go back and watch it. It's in the pinned comment down below and it's also in the description. So check that out before, um, you know, attempting this one. So uh, first I'm going to give you the MO over EI diagram because that's kind of the first step always, okay, is M over EI diagram. Cool. So I gave you the M over EI diagram, um, you know, uh, because EI is constant, it's the same shape as the moment diagram. So go ahead, draw the moment diagram and divide the whole thing by EI. This one's really simple. So go ahead, try that on your own, obviously. And, uh, you know, uh, just for practice, of course. And, um, okay, so what do we need to do first? Well, uh, after drawing the M over EI diagram, we need to draw our elastic curve and uh, make a nice big kind of sketch so that we can start to label the angles and see what it is that we're doing. Here. So let's take a look. So we're going to draw our elastic curve here. Let's label it. Right, and we have our 10, we have our five here, right? And um, let's draw our tangent line at point A, okay? So I think you'll notice, and you'll notice kind of a continuing trend in these questions, especially the simply supported ones, is you can kind of always find theta A, given the fact that uh, at C, the deflection is zero, so the elastic curve is zero. So this entire quantity is simply delta CA, okay? Which is what we went over in the previous question. So we have this quantity here. Okay, but theta A is not what we're looking for. What are we looking for in this question? Well, we're looking for the max deflection. Okay, so the max deflection, and I'm just going to draw it somewhere here. Okay, we're going to say that that happens at point D. Okay, so we have our delta D here. Okay, so our delta D, we're going to say is our max deflection, and it happens at some point X. So that's the problem right now is we don't know where this uh, where this point is, okay? So that's that's one of the main issues. But what we do know, okay, is that the tangent line at this point D is equal. The slope of the tangent line is equal to zero, because the maximum deflection is going to occur at the apex of the or the critical point of the elastic curve. It's going to happen at the maximum of the elastic curve or the minimum in this case because it's downwards uh, parabola. So we're going to try and get to the, a point where we can use that information in order to solve it. But first, we need to get xm. We need to get the distance that's acting to here. Okay. So uh, how are we going to do that? Well, first, we're going to get theta a. And then I'm going to show you exactly how those two relate. So let's start with theta a. So for, if, you, uh, if you're not sure what I'm doing here, go back to the previous video. So we have theta ca. Theta ca is just the distance between the tangent line and the elastic curve. The elastic curve at c is 0. So this entire thing is c, uh, delta ca. And delta CA is simply the moment area of the moment uh, M over EI diagram about point C. So let's go down here and let's try and solve for theta A. So we have theta A is opposite, opposite of our triangles, delta CA. Our adjacent is the whole length here. We know that. That's 15. And let's find delta CA. So let's go ahead and start down here so we have more room. So we have 1 over EI. Okay, so that we want the area of this triangle here. So that's going to be 400 times the base, which is 5, divided by 2, times the distance to the centroid. Okay, that's uh, 2 thirds of 5. So we have 10 over 3. And let's do this triangle here. So we have 400 times 10 this time, divided by 2. And that is going to be 5 plus, and we have 10, 1 third of 10 to the centroid plus 5. So we have 10 over 3. Cool. And if we go ahead and calculate delta CA out, we're going to get that delta CA is just simply 20,000 kilonewton meter cubed over EI. Cool. Now, uh, as you can see, we can find theta A because we have our unknown. So theta A okay, is simply going to be, uh, let's go ahead and plug that in. We're going to get that theta A is simply 1,333 over EI. All right. 
So how are we going to use this information? We got theta a, but you know, how do we use it? Well, I'm going to show you how we use it. So at remember what I said about delta d. So delta d is our maximum deflection. That's what we assumed. So we're going to draw the tangent at delta d. And we know that the slope of the tangent at delta d, like I said, is 0. So it's going to be a straight line, and it's going to be parallel to the beam. And since theta a, so the angle between the beam, which is horizontal, and the tangent line is called is theta a, and it's this value, okay? Since this is a horizontal line, this is going to make the same angle. And the, the angle that the tangent makes with uh, the tangent at a, it, we're going to call that delta dA. Okay, so we can say, let's go ahead and divide that. We're going to say that theta dA is equal to theta a. Cool. So now we have theta dA, all right? But how are we going to use this information? Well, we can say that theta dA is actually, so remember when we said uh, delta CA was the moment area of the M over EI diagram, okay? Uh, theta CA, for example, would just be the area. So that's uh, between C and A. So that's the same thing here. So theta dA is simply going to be the area between D and A on the M over EI diagram. But we don't have this quantity here, right? We don't have that quantity. So what is that quantity? Well, this quantity, we know it's at some distance x, okay? We know it's at some distance x from A, and we also know the slope. Right? We know the slope is 400 of this line divided by 10. So rise over run. So we can say that this quantity is simply the slope of the line times xm over ei. Okay? Because the slope times the run, which is x, will give us the rise. And now we have our quantity for, uh, at point d, where the maximum deflection is going to happen in terms of our variable distance x. So now with that information, we can find the area from D to A of the M over EI diagram. So let's try that. So theta DA is simply going to be 40 XM over EI. And it's also equal to theta A, right? Which is 1,333 over EI. And we can go ahead and solve for XM. XM is simply going to be 8.16 meters. Perfect. So now we have the distance to, this is 8.16 meters. Now we have the distance to the maximum deflection, which is perfect, because that's what we need. That was our missing piece of information here to solve it. Now, and I'm just going to draw this in here. So this distance here is delta dA. So that's the distance from the elastic curve at the point of maximum deflection to the tangent. And we have this delta d, which is the actual deflection of the beam. We have xm now, right, which is our adjacent length, and we have our theta a. So if we come down here now, let's uh, establish an expression. Okay, so we have uh, the tangent of theta a, theta is small, so we're going to say that it's just theta, is equal to delta d plus delta dA over the adjacent side, which is x. So theta a is simply delta dA plus delta d over x, which is 8.16. Okay, so we want the deflection. Let's go ahead and isolate for it. So we, we, have, we want delta d. Delta d is simply going to be theta a times 8.16 minus delta dA. And that's the expression that we want. This quantity here, we don't have it, but we can go ahead and find it now because we have our uh, x value. Okay, so that's simply going to be the moment area of the M over EI diagram about d. And we're going to take it, obviously, from the left because it's just a small little triangle and it's much easier. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Okay, so delta dA coming down here now. So we have our delta dA is simply about d. So we're looking at it from the left. The, the, the height of that, the quantity is 40 uh, x over ei. Okay, so we have 40 and x. I'm going to plug that in, okay, over ei. That is our the, the quantity on the m over ei diagram at, at point d. Okay, we're going to multiply that by the length. The length is simply 8.16. And we're going to multiply by 1 half, okay, because it's a triangle. So we have height times base times 1 half, okay, and then we're going to multiply by the distance to the centroid about point D, okay. So that's just going to be 8.16 over 3. Sorry for the messy writing there, guys. I hope you can read that. And finally, okay, we're going to go ahead and calculate this, and we get a value of 3622.26. Over e i. Now that we have that, okay, we have everything we need to solve for our delta d, which is our max deflection. So let's go ahead and find our 
which is equal to delta max, okay, which is simply theta a. Let's go ahead and plug that in. We have 133.33 times 8.16 over ei. That's going to be minus 3622.26 over ei. And if we go ahead and calculate that, go ahead and plug in ei. Um, you know, this is 10 to the 6, 10 to the minus 6, so you can just multiply 200 by 700 on the denominator. We're going to get that delta max is simply equal to 51.7 millimeters, and that is in the downward direction. Perfect. Cool. So that's the answer there. Um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. i sorry it got a little messy here, but I think you can read that. Other than that, you know, just take advantage of the fact that we know that the slope at the point of maximum deflection is equal to zero. Once we know that, you know, we can find that we can equate theta a to theta da. Once we find that, then we can come down here and we can solve for the distance to the maximum deflection. Once we have the distance, then we have these these quantities here and we can solve for the deflection. Thanks for watching guys. Much appreciated. A little longer, a bit of trickier of a video. Um, I kind of find these like little drawings and these ones kind of hard to explain, so I hope that you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments down below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and thank you for watching.